Um, Liz, if you wouldn't mind, start recording. Thank you. Um, so thank you everyone who has joined us today. You have made it to the Thinking About Life After High School webinar. Um, today we are here to learn from some local environmental leaders about opportunities for students after high school to continue learning and growing their careers. So this webinar, I'll click forward here, is a part of a Preparing for a Career in Science webinar series. This is a webinar series that was made for high school students. Um, you might have caught some of our earlier webinars in the month of April, or maybe you were on our last one um, last week. We explored topics like preparing a resume. We talked to a lot of different environmental professionals about their career journeys. We talked about some career planning tools that students can use as they're planning for their future careers. So if you're interested in any of those past webinars, please take a look on the link that's up on the screen here in red, and you can watch the recordings of those webinars. Um, to get us started, I'll just introduce myself really quick. My name is Claudia Rosen. I'm a community engagement coordinator at Buffalo Niagara Waterkeeper. If you haven't heard of us before, we're a nonprofit organization, and our goal is to protect and restore water and surrounding ecosystems for the benefit of current and future generations. So we do this in a lot of different ways. On the screen here, you'll see we protect clean water, we restore the health of ecosystems, we connect people to their water, and we also try to inspire economic growth and community engagement. Um, today, I'm also lucky to be joined by Liz Cute. She's a senior program manager at Waterkeeper, and um, she's also gonna be telling us a little bit of what, about Waterkeeper's volunteer and internship programs, but she's helping out on the back end too. She's recording this webinar, and she's helping us to take a look at the chat um, and question and answer function. So if while we're talking, you happen to have any questions, please feel free to pop them in the question um, box and we'll make sure to, to answer them as we're talking. So um, I mentioned before that Waterkeeper focuses in the Niagara River watershed. So that's what you're seeing here on this map. Um, and I just wanna take a moment to think about where we are today. Um, the Niagara River watershed here on this map is that yellow area. And you'll notice that we've got stars here showing uh, the city of Buffalo, the city of Niagara Falls. Um, I've marked where I'm calling in from, which is in Derby, near York, down by the edge of our watershed by 18 Mile Creek. And I'd like you to take a second to think about where you're calling in from on this map. You could think about where you'd place your star. Um, we're really lucky in our watershed to live in between two Great Lakes. You'll notice we're between Lake Erie and Lake Ontario. And we know the Great Lakes provide drinking water for millions of people. So what we do here in our watershed impacts them too. Um, and I hope that by perhaps considering a career in science, you're also thinking about stewardship and what we can do to protect this amazing natural resource that we're really lucky to live near. I also want to acknowledge that I'm calling in from the historic territory of the Haudenosaunee. Um, this means people of the Longhouse and they lived here long before Europeans came to this area. And we just wanna acknowledge them as the past, present and future caretakers of this land and water. So if you can take a look at this map, you might see the current and historic territory of the Haudenosaunee. Um, and if you click the link below, you can explore some other areas, some other states in Canada to explore other native people's land. So I'll get started with our first speaker, which is my colleague, Liz Cute. She is a senior community engagement manager and she manages the Riverwatch Volunteer Water Quality Monitoring Program, which is our volunteer program here at Waterkeeper, as well as our internship program. So I popped a picture of her up on here and thanks for joining us today, Liz. We're really excited to hear about some of the opportunities that Waterkeeper has for students. Awesome. Thank you, Claudia. I'm just going to get my slides up here. All right. Thanks all. Um, as Claudia said, my name is Liz Cute. I'm a senior community engagement manager at Waterkeeper. And yeah, I'll be giving you an overview of some of the current volunteer opportunities 
that Waterkeeper has, great ways to expose yourself to some new opportunities, you know, get your feet wet and see if something might trigger your interest and maybe it's something you'd want to do as a career. And if you're looking for a deeper dive into a science or a nonprofit type of position in your future, um, we have internships and I'll go over some of our programs that we've done in the past. You will hear from a past intern um, who, you know, utilized our internship program in progress of a uh, career change. So I'll start with our volunteer opportunities. We have several. These are three of our main volunteer opportunities, ways, you know, people in the community of all ages, but great ways for you know, high school students or recent graduates to get involved and learn more about the local environment, meet a lot of people, great for networking, meeting waterkeeper staff, waterkeeper volunteers, other environmental professionals, and give back to the environment and the community, but also learning a lot about different potential careers and um, different skills. You'll learn some different skills that are very transferable, things that you could add onto your resume, which is one of our previous um, webinars about building your first resume. So volunteer opportunities are always a great addition, especially if you're a high school student that might not have a lot of work experience. These are great things to add in. So we have three, I'll be highlighting three volunteer opportunities that Waterkeeper has. Our cleanups, which entails cleaning up litter, plastic pollution from the shorelines of our waterways. Restore Core. This is a program where you'll be helping plant trees or native plants, or shrubs, or maintaining the, the integrity of past plantings by doing some maintenance. And then River Watch is our citizen science program. So we train volunteers to collect data throughout our waterways and be our eyes and ears to collect data and also report any problems or pollution issues that they see. So a little bit more about our cleanup programs. There are opportunities to get involved in cleanups all year round, even in the winter, if you so desire. We have solo sweep opportunities where volunteers can clean up on their own or with a friend, a family member. And on our website, um, if you search for cleanups, you'll see an, a place where you can record the data, like what type of trash you collected um, on our website. And this is really great information that we use for our policy and advocacy work. So you'll be helping to clean up waterways, but also help propel our mission and protect water. If you wanted to do something in a group setting, we do have group cleanups in the spring. We just wrapped up our spring sweep. This summer, we'll be highlighting a lot of um, sweep opportunities, cleanup opportunities along the Buffalo River corridor. And then in the fall, we'll focus on the Skajakwita Creek corridor um, just north of the city of Buffalo. So there will be you know, group cleanups at specific sites at specific times. If that's, um, that's a great opportunity to meet other people, meet some of the waterkeeper staff and volunteers that will be site captains or leading those events. And in the summer months, we'll also have on water cleanups. So you could gain a new skill of kayaking. You don't have to have any experience, but you can volunteer and go in a kayak and clean up trash that maybe isn't easy to get from the shoreline or is floating on the water. So, you know, make sure to, to stay in, uh, on our website. I'll share that at the end of my presentation. You can sign up for all of these different different cleanup opportunities um, throughout the year. Restore Core, our other volunteer program that people really enjoy involves planting native trees, shrubs, other plants along waterways um, near the edge. We like to um, create a riparian buffer. Um, trees and shrubs that protect the waters from runoff and pollution. And if we're not planting, we might be having events where volunteers can help us 
mulch around these plantings, water the plantings during their first couple of years of establishment to make sure they survive and thrive, or helping with other maintenance tasks like uh, mulching walkways along some of these right, um, restoration areas um, and other tasks that need to be done just to keep everything looking great and staying healthy. So these restore core planting and maintenance events primarily happen in the spring and the fall. That's the best time to plant things when it's not super hot and it's not super dry, the plants will thrive better. So you'll be looking for spring and fall events for those restore core opportunities. And this is great. You'll learn skills like how to properly plant a tree and how to properly mulch a tree, which you'll use in future life if you ever decide to plant something, you know, at a future home or a friend's house, you can give them a hand. There's a lot of wrong ways to do it. It sounds very simple, but you can learn the right way to ensure the success um, and you know, long life of that native tree or shrub. The last volunteer position I wanted to highlight is, um, well, several positions. It's within our Riverwatch Citizen Science Program. And this year we've expanded this program to have many different positions so that there's opportunities for everyone. Some folks don't have a lot of free time in their, their schedule if you're a student or working. Um, and some folks are retired, so we wanted to have positions that would work in everyone's schedule. Some, some of the positions require more training than others, so it's, there's op an opportunity for pretty much everyone to get involved. Three of the positions that we have this year are our water reporter volunteers, and this is super flexible, a simple training, and then you can go out and volunteer whenever and wherever you want. You'll be taking pictures, observations of our waterways, and you'll be on an email listserv to get monthly photo challenges. And we'll provide you a little educational background on maybe plastic pollution or algal bloom issues or water quality issues, things to look out for. And then your eyes are on the waterways when you're out recreating, walking, biking, whatever you're doing. And this helps our staff see what's going on in our giant watershed that Claudia shared before and can help us be aware of what's going on. How do people view their waterways? Everyone views them differently. So this is great information to share. And it's a great community forum. You can comment and like different people's photos as well. We have Nurdle Patrol volunteers that are trained in a 10 minute data collection process to collect these small plastic nurdles. You'll see in that middle picture in the vial, they're the size of a lentil. They're plastic that gets shipped to plastic manufacturers and then gets melted down to make, you know, a kayak or a pool, a pool slide or a chair, like any plastic item. This is that raw material um, that gets shipped around. And unfortunately, throughout the world, throughout the US, and here in Western New York, along some of our waterways, we're finding these plastic nurdles. And if we can identify where they're at, track their location, their density, their distribution, we can try to solve this pollution issue and track down the source. So this is a really great opportunity um, for folks of any age, 10 minutes, a simple training, um, and then you're good to go. Our baseline water chemistry volunteers, this is a position that takes the most training, the most um, time commitment, and you do have to have, um, you have a strict schedule that's set by our staff because there's special equipment that's used to take parameter readings. We're looking at temperature of water, the pH of water, dissolved oxygen, a bunch of different water chemistry parameters that helps us keep a pulse check on our waterways and to see if they're improving or you know, getting worse over time, or how are these waterways responding to recent restoration projects? It's like when you go to the doctor and get a checkup, we're going once a month to these waterways to, to see how they're doing, to do a little checkup. So these are you know, pretty highly trained volunteers and there's not as many openings, but if you're super interested, 
um, and it works in your schedule. It's a great opportunity to learn um, about field equipment and a little bit more about water chemistry. All right, so those are some of our volunteer opportunities. Now I'm gonna shift gears and talk a little bit about our internship opportunities. So our internships, we primarily offer spring, summer, and fall internships. So if you're thinking about a time frame, we like to model this off of the college um, schedule, college semester schedule. So we would be posting positions on our website um, during those different time frames, and from you know spring to summer to fall, and from year to year, the positions that we offer really do change, and this is dependent on what are the needs of our staff, what programs are we working on, where do we need help, or where could we offer really great educational opportunities for a potential internship to gain some really great, you know, skills that will um, relate to future work. So I can't say, you know, what we'll have for the fall yet. It really just depends. So just keep an eye on our website for different postings. Oop, I have a typo. Compensation. Sorry about that. So compensation for our internships. Um, it depends on what type of internship it is. Um, some of our internships are more of a volunteer position where the hour requirement is relatively low, less than 15 hours, sometimes close to six to eight hours a week with a really flexible time frame. And this is um, really great to just gain some educational experience. It's a little bit more intense than just a regular volunteer position, which I just explained three of those. You'll be meeting with a staff member you know, pretty regularly throughout the semester and learn a little bit more about how nonprofits work and how a certain program or project would function that you would be helping with. Um, or if you're getting college credit, this is always um, very often a, an opportunity for a college student is to do an internship and get credit for it. So that would fall within that kind of volunteer um, position internship. Um, from time to time, um, when we do have funding, we love and really aim to offer paid internship positions um, where interns would be getting an hourly wage, a livable wage. And this um, would relate to more of a normal work experience type of position. Um, you'd be helping on a lot of, um, a lot more crucial tasks. And um, so it's still educational, but the work is um, a little bit elevated in terms of what you're doing and what you're responsible for. So you'd be you know, held a little bit more accountable for what you're getting done during that position. And um, that's all laid out in the internship position before you apply. You'll know if it's volunteer or paid and you'd know all of those details. So we're really hoping to in the future offer more of those paid positions so that you know, it's accessible to everyone. Um, you know, if you have to work during college, I definitely did. Um, I wouldn't have been able to take many volunteer internship opportunities. So we're really hoping to do more of those paid positions into the future. And just to highlight, you know, past positions we've had, what does an internship at Waterkeeper look like or what has it looked like in the past? We've had interns that have assisted our river tours program. So a lot of kayaking, assisting kayak guests, so you'd learn a lot of skills related to paddling, fitting people to a boat, paddle strokes. So this is great if you're looking for a career in outdoor recreation um, or maybe being a kayak rental outfitter or something like that. We've had interns help with um, you know, education programs. So more of a naturalist type of volunteer experience where you're teaching um, community members about the world around you um, and interpreting that landscape in a fun way to make them really interested and start to love the environment so that they want to protect it. We've had interns help with very specific rest, um, very specific um, ecological programs where it's a lot of um, pretty rigorous field work. This was one of our paid positions. You're out, we were out in the streams three days a week collecting a lot of water quality data 
So great field work for you know, future biological field technician positions with maybe the Fish and Wildlife Service or the DEC. And we've had interns, interns help with um, other community outreach, like our fish consumption outreach program, um, you know, talking with anglers about the fish in our local area and are those fish you know, safe and recommended to consume? And this is where I'm very excited to have one of our former interns um, here on our webinar to talk a little bit about her experience with her internship, which was related to fish consumption. Um, Vicki here is uh, the middle person in our photo um, with another staff member, Wendy, and an interpreter, um, since we have lots of folks that fish the Niagara River and surrounding waterways that English isn't their first language. So we wanted to bring the info to them um, in their you know, native language if possible. So I'm gonna pass it over to Vicki to describe a little bit about her experience interning with Waterkeeper and how it was impactful for her career. Um, hi everybody. Thank you for having me Liz and Claudia. Um, so I guess in order to kind of describe like how the internship was helpful in my career, um, I'm going to give you a little bit of background, so bear with me here. Um, I got my bachelor's in communication and social gerontology from UB, and then I got my master's in public administration from Brockport. Um, so my deal is I always knew I wanted to work with the elderly. Um, I, so I geared my education that way. Um, I worked in healthcare as an activities director for about 10 years since college. Um, and I really just got burned out. Um, I really liked it. I loved it actually, but I just got burnt out. Um, so I took a different position in a different field and it was not for me. Um, I did not like it. Um, I learned a lot, but it just wasn't for me. So I kept going back to like, what do I really enjoy? What am I really passionate about? So I kept going back to my love for the outdoors. Um, and I was so lucky to find Waterkeeper um, and was offered the fish consumption internship in the summer of 2017. So um, I worked full time, was raising a small human and um, was able to do the internship on the weekend. So it was really, um, it fit into my schedule and it was good. Um, but doing the outreach of the community and, you know, talking with people about the health of our waterways, um, common fish in the area, educating about the practices and the health effects of eating local fish. Um, it made me really realize that, you know, there was overlap between my past positions and um, that I actually had to improve those skills because I was like, oh my gosh, I already have my master's degree. You know, I don't want to go back to school again. Um, so it just helped me realize that that was, you know, um, where I wanted to go. I learned so much content wise and got to work with cool people like Liz and, um, and you know, just, um, you know, really kind of like, okay, this is the direction I want to go in. Um, I also did the River Watch program in 2018 and 2019, which was awesome also. And um, actually, you know, still keep in touch with my teammates and stuff like that. Um, but anyways, um, I was able to get more experience in the environmental field. Um, I got a job at UB as a project manager for a EIS and STEM education project um, called ICEF. Um, and then, you know, from there, the internship also helped me to get my current position at Rhinestein Woods. Um, I am the development manager. So, you know, I help get funding um, like grants and donors to help support environmental and conservation projects. So I guess my advice is just, you know, find something that you're passionate about and it's okay to change your career at any age. And the internships like the ones at Waterkeeper um, can really help you get there. So that's my spiel. <laughs> Thank you so much, Vicki. <laughs> it's great to, I love staying in touch with past interns and seeing how it has helped make an impact on their life. It's like the best feel good stories ever. So thank you for sharing 
um, so people can you know, hear and think about that. And maybe, you know, don't be afraid to try an internship. You might hate it. And then that will help you learn what not to do for your career, or it can help you guide you in the right direction. Right. <laughs> so that is great. Um, so I just want to make sure everyone knows how to stay informed about those volunteer opportunities, those, you know, upcoming uh, in internship positions that we might be offering in future semesters. Um, there's many ways to stay informed. We have social media, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Our handle is at BN Waterkeeper. You can sign up for our e-newsletter. If you go to our main page of our website, bnwaterkeeper.org, scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll see something that says subscribe. And that's where you'll you know, put in your email address. You'll get monthly a monthly email with updates about programs, water quality, um, you know, issues or concerns, um, just a great way to stay in touch in general. And then you can always explore our website. Um, we have our internship page, we have volunteer pages for those different programs. If you're wanting to learn a little bit more about say Restore Core and past projects we've done, you can read up on some of that and see if that's something you'd be interested in volunteering in the future. All right, so I think that's all I had for you, Claudia. Thank you all so much. And um, you know, you can always find my email on the website if you're interested in more information. Um, I'm on our staff page. So thank you. Thank you, Liz, and thank you so much, Vicky, for popping in and sharing your story. That was really great to hear. Um, I'm just going to bring back up our slideshow here, and. Um, so, I, oh, also before we skip on to our next speaker, who I'm really excited to hear from, um, I wanted to mention too that Buffalo Niagara Waterkeeper is just one nonprofit in kind of our huge community here in Western New York. So if there's a different topic that maybe you're interested or a different path, I definitely encourage you to explore all the other organizations and agencies and other people that are doing great work, both in the environmental space and also other spaces in this field of science and careers um, here in Western New York. Um, there's lots of different options out there. And as we talked about before, even if you get an experience where you're like, hmm, maybe I didn't like that so much, I'm gonna try something new. It's still something that taught you a little bit about what you're gonna do later on in life. So it's a valuable experience. Okay, so let me see if I can get us to click forward here. Um, and now I'm going to introduce Matthew McKenzie, who we're so excited to hear from. Matthew is a lifelong organizer and a current student at Niagara University. Um, Matthew, I have to admit, I first met you at a wonderful webinar you led with some of your other um, students, fellow students at Niagara University for the Underground Railroad Heritage Center up in Niagara Falls. And you guys were just so um, inspiring to hear from. So I'm really excited to hear a little bit about your journey, the work that you do, and any advice you might have for high school students and how they can get involved. Definitely. Thank you so much, Claudia. That that was a fantastic introduction. Um, first, I just I'd love to uh, be able to say thank you so much for the invitation, and I really feel fantastic to be able to be on here and being able to speak to high school students about. So something really engagement and organizing, which is something I'm so um, passionate about and involved in. So um, I'll, I'll do a, I'll do a quick quick background for myself. I'm I'm from Niagara Falls, New York. Um, born and raised here, and I really think it's important for, for for me and to to acknowledge this that Niagara Falls really informs a lot of the organizing the experience and knowledge that I have in, in what I do in my day-to-day -day life. Um, a lot of people don't realize this. Uh, Western New York in itself is a hub of activist energy. It's probably, it, it's, it's a historical and very important site in the United States and globally. Um, specifically in Niagara Falls, we were one of the ends of the Underground Railroad Museum. And we were very interesting can be considered the beginning of the modern environmental movement with Love Canal. 
And I use that as really a jumping off point for my confidence and my passion in, in what I do. It, it's, it, it really, I feel it should be for every resident, a chip on their shoulder to be able to go out there and understand what's going on. And for, for any person in Western New York, I really feel that way. Um, really what I'm, I'm very lucky to have the privilege to be able to have my hands in a lot of different organizing. Um, I'm a political science and national studies major at Niagara. And a lot of that stuff pertains, I, I do a lot of legal work. Um, I'm, I'm hoping to, to go to law school soon. I've been lucky enough to, to learn about, to learn firsthand from, from Lois Gibbs about the legal cases and all of the stuff going on, even still now today in, in Western New York with the, with the Love Canal crisis. Um, I've been lucky enough to work with the Western New York Peace Center on initiatives for uh, demilitarization um, in envir acknowledgement and environmental rights. And m moving from that too, um, I've been able to, to learn so much through, through experience. I really, I really feel that one of the best things I ever did was push myself to, to join groups at my university or in my community. Um, I've learned so much. I've been lucky enough to be a part of Peace Action New York State, which is a multifaceted peace group that's working to, to address all of the injustices around um, poverty, militarism, the climate crisis, all of these things. Um, so I really, if there's one thing you come away from what I'm saying is you, you don't really have to focus on one thing. It's, I've been, I've learned that everything's interconnected. Um, most, the most successful organizing is an intersectional organizing. Um, you'll, you'll find that a lot of the issues with poverty are also interconnected with the issues of environmental racism. Um, for perfect example, downtown Niagara Falls is very much affected by a multitude of, of chemical companies that are spewing toxins into the river and spewing toxins into the atmosphere. And then as well, on top of that, they have, um, they have a big garbage mound that gives Niagara Falls a very unique scent and is the epitome of environmental racism. Um, definitely some more advice um, going off, get involved in whenever, whatever you can. It's, it's really doing hands-on stuff is really where you learn what your interests are and what your, how you learn what your skills can develop into. With that, don't, don't be afraid to, to start something new. Um, sp specifically for, for my university campus, we didn't have a lot of, of political engagement groups. Um, I went on to be able to start one of my own chapters here of Peace Action, which is, which is today and hopefully won't be in the future, but the only political activism group on campus. Um, don't, don't be afraid to ask questions, um, especially in classes. If, if you don't if you don't understand something say it really it's 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 in the classroom it's in your community you won't be able to know what it is without asking and there's no shame in that really um on top of that as well don't be afraid to ask the hard questions a lot of the times i've been in situations where um what i might ask or what i might say might dis dis disagree with what an authority figure in the room might be wanting to say or might want people to think and always always work to challenge that it's every, everyone has power you all you have to do is claim it on top of that as well um look look for groups like like the water keepers um any getting involved with them through support donations volunteering your time working for internships it's it's a it's a two it's a both way thing both both parties benefit so those are really, really the big pieces of advice that i can offer to high school students um really honestly i'm i'm very i'm very jealous of high school students right now it, we're i think we're in a very interesting time in the political climate of the country and i really wish i knew the things that i knew now 
when I was a high school graduate. Um, my first two years in college were, it, they were a bit challenging for me. I wasn't, I was too afraid to get involved with certain things, but once you take that step, you're, you're always going to have anxiety. It's, it's always, it's always going to be a challenging thing to do, but once you take that leap and, and get involved in your community, get involved in your campus, get involved with, with just your, your family and your friends, it's, it, it opens up something completely brand new. It's, it's something, it's something beautiful. It's, it's something that really you can dedicate your life to. So th that's really what I have to say to everyone. And I, I thank you so much for inviting me on this. And I'm so happy to have been able to talk to everybody here. Thank you, Matthew. That was really great to hear. I'm wondering if I could ask you a quick question before, okay. before we wrap it up. Um, I'm so interested to hear you mentioned that you were um, at first hesitant to get involved and that you were um, currently really involved in some of that organizing. Um, I wonder if you could kind of define what organizing means to some of the high school students who might be watching. And then if there's any advice for how to get involved in that for them that you could share, like how to take that first step, that would be awesome. Absolutely, absolutely. I feel like, um, Organizing is a concept that looks like a lot of different things. It's not, and as, as this comes to um, community engagement, as this comes to activism, organizing looks like a lot of different things. It's not just the person out there um, on, a, on a megaphone um, yelling chants. It's organizing is, is full on community engagement. It's, it's working with your neighbors, it's working with your partners, to to really address a a problem that people are facing um a perfect example of this is if if you if you see that there's there's a lot of food insecurity in, in your in your community um one way that you could address this is maybe working to con connect um in, especially in western new york working to connect the agricultural part of of our of especially niagara and erie county with with your community trying to set up a partnership where people go out there and bring produce into the community it's it's not always the big flashy things that um a lot of people that are accustomed to especially from from films from books from from all this organizing really is i think a fundamental aspect of of being in a community it's it's taking care of your your fellow person and go, going out of your way to to address something that's a really cool definition i love that you said it's it's a fundamental aspect of a community um, and i think you know from my experience um, it wasn't something i thought about certainly a lot when i was a student and i think there's a lot of students out here who don't um, consider organizing or social justice or environmental justice as issues that they can really do something about in their own local community. So it's really cool to be able to kind of talk to you as an example of a person who has taken some of their experiences and is really doing amazing work to try and work towards solutions. So that's that's really cool to hear. Thank you so much. And um, a answering the second part of your of your question, how could yeah. high school students do that how could high school graduates or high school students um really it, i mean it's it's definitely i'm not gonna to, it's it's not super a simple thing to do um it is it is it is a challenge but it's something that is it is it's something that can be done it is something that is possible it's not it's It's, it could be really a group of friends getting together and talking about a problem. Maybe there's an issue at their, their school. Maybe they want to challenge uh, misogynistic policies at their, at their high school. Um, something, something like that, getting, to, getting a group, to, group of friends together and show, uh, doing something in solidarity to, to address this or doing something that challenges these policies to to highlight the problems with that. It could, it could really be as simple as that. It could be 
um, sh showing up in support of of your fellow students that that really need your assistance, especially with with something like like um, every my, my high school definitely had misogynistic policies. I went to to a Catholic school. Um, the 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 burden that they put on our our our, fem our female students is is ridiculous. So doing something in solidarity with them, um, just something like that, um, showing that it's not just one group of people that has to worry about something. It's you, you recognize that it's a problem for, for everybody. It's you, you're acknowledging their struggle and you're doing something to address it. You're, you're showing up to support them. And I think it could, it really can be something as simple as that. Yeah. I wonder when you were at NU, um, how did you find friends or other students who were concerned about the same issues that you were concerned about? Did you kind of just randomly meet them or did you seek them out at specific groups? I, my friendships came from three big, three big things. Um, mm -hmm. My classes, I've been lucky enough to, Niagara University is, I'd say definitely a conservative campus, but political science and a lot, some of the other departments are definitely more um, inclined to social justice, inclined to pro progressive real world things, um, real world, like actual politics. Um, so I've been lucky enough to meet people through my classes of definitely you want to go to your your diversity groups. Um, I was an officer in my university's Black Student Union for two years. And I met a lot of people through that and I learned a lot about other people's experiences. Um, it's, 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 it's very interesting. Like I, there, there is no solid identity, especially for something in the Black Student Union. So I was able to learn from that. And then I was lucky enough to be a part of my university's social justice living learning community, where I met a lot of my friends through that. And there, there were a lot of challenges and, and problems with, with that living learning community, but I made a lot of amazing friends and we really tackled a lot of problems that we recognized on campus that would have been much harder to do without that community. So one of, I definitely the, put yourself out there, get involved in things that might be scary, um, but they, they might just be scary in the moment. Looking back on it, you don't wanna be disappointed that you didn't try something. And in, in a week, in a month, in a year, you'll be looking back and like, why was I even scared about that? I, I've been there. That's, That's like, you know, change isn't comfortable. So, right, if you wanna make, a difference, make a change. Yeah, you're gonna have to deal with some uncomfortable feelings or, or hardships. So that's that's so true and such a good point to make. Thank you, definitely. Yeah, and maybe as you are attending a high school or a college that doesn't have a club that is meeting your, you know, your, your needs or your desires. Um, the college I went to in Ohio um, I was part of a, a club that was forming, it formed itself. Um, there was something lacking on the, you know, the list of prescribed clubs or groups and a group of students, you know, formed their own and had to go through, you know, the formal process through the college to get recognized, had to have, you know, a faculty advisor, but that was also a really great a learning opportunity. So if you have those, that group of friends or classmates that are, you know, thinking along the same lines in terms of making a change or a difference in a certain space, um, you can form a new, a new club or organization, which is, you know, would definitely enhance your leadership skills for, for future you know, out of college experiences. Um, but after school clubs in high school, um, I've seen new ones pop up at different high schools as well, if you can find a, a staff advisor. So there are opportunities even where you don't think there are, um, you can make them happen if you're determined enough. Yeah. And one, one um, off that as well, um, don't, don't be dissuaded if you don't get immediate or if you even get campus recognition or being able to be a club organization, just, just having a community or having a group of people that you meet with to talk about things or 
to to work for a common goal is is very important and don't don't let the fact that campus doesn't recognize the importance of that dissuade you from doing it having your own community is extremely important that's also great advice i love it um you know make you can make anything happen really if you get together with a group of other people who are interested and your community is what you make it um that's kind of what i heard from both of you and i think that's that's really good advice um as kids are going into college and they're thinking about how they're going to make friends how they're going to gain experience there's so much that kind of goes into thinking about life after high school so i think that's great career advice, you know, in terms of gaining experience, but it's also great life advice in terms of just making good connections with other people that make you feel good and give you a sense of community. Um, so I love that. Thank you guys. Um, do we have any other questions for our amazing speakers who joined us today? Matthew and Liz, thank you so much um, for your time and for all of your advice. I'll give it a couple seconds for folks. You can either put it in the chat or the uh, question and answer box that should be at the bottom of your screen. Um, but if we don't have any questions, I want to just kind of wrap up. This is the last webinar of our five part series. So um, we're just so grateful to have everyone join um, throughout this five part series. We did we discussed a lot of topics about how to prepare for a career in science. And I think one thing that we really came to throughout the series, if you followed along, one theme is that there's so many different, unfortunately, environmental issues out there in the world. And it can be a little bit scary, but I hope throughout this series, you've learned that there's also a lot of different environmental professionals and a lot of different people that we're gonna need to solve those problems with a diversity of skills, a diversity of the ways that they think and their backgrounds. So even if you think, you know, you might not be able to help, you can. Um, and there's lots of opportunities for you to learn more and to help out um, to make our community and our environment a better place. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you, Matthew and Liz for, for coming along and, and giving us advice today. Um, and we hope to see you guys. Maybe you join us at a volunteer event um, or you watch one of our future webinars. Um, so thank you. <laughs>